I'm here with Mark Robbins, who is a state manager of okay. Farley. Um, that is quite a large undertaking, having heard exactly what goes on here at the estate. Can you just sort of tell us the different parts of the estate, so not just your question, there's obviously lots of different aspects. Okay, so we've got, there's 23 people employed on the estate full time, plus casuals. Um, we've got a 250 cow dairy herd that supplies milk to Marks and Spencers. We've got 700 acres of arable cropping where we grow crops for Warburton's bread, for example. Um, we've got 65,000 square foot of commercial let buildings, offices, warehousing, 13 cottages that we rent out, a shoot letting 40 days a year shooting uh, and then I also look after the private household as well. And just one estate manager. You're Superman. No, I don't think so, but I have a fantastic job. Um, <laughs> and I think probably the best way to describe it is it's not my train set, but I'm allowed to play with it. That, <laughs> that can sometimes be the best thing, actually. Same with horses. What I was really intrigued about, actually, and what I admire is that we all love the period drama Downton Abbey. Well, not all, but as a generalisation, many do. I think it's amazing to see an estate that's forward thinking, that is making revenue mm. from things other than farming, traditionally, mm -hmm. which might have been. Mm. And this estate in particular really seems to have its finger on the pulse when it comes to new ventures. Mm. And this isn't just, we're going to open an equestrian facility. How this is targeted everything, the facilities are second to none. So can you talk me through the process you mentioned before sort of began in 2004? Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I think the first thing to think about is that we are living in a very affluent part of the world and we have access to open space to the countryside. And a lot of people that live around here would work in London, live in quite, uh, quite built up areas and what they really want to get hold of is that access to the open space. So therefore for an estate like us, we have that open space, we own it and effectively what we're doing is we're selling access to the open space and access to the countryside and the Downton Abbey type of life. There's a lot of people that, that would like to live that life um, and, and we are quite happy to help them do that um, by providing them facilities like we've got here. So this, this project started in 2004. We looked at this site to decide should we have housing, should we have commercial lets, but we decided we wanted to keep something in line with farming and horticulture was the right approach to it. Um, and from there we decided, working with Natalie Samuel, the Lord Beersted's daughter, what sort of facilities would we like to see down here and we set about building them. And it's taken a long, long time, but what we've got here today is absolutely fabulous. I mean, I, I remember saying to my children a number of years ago, one day you will stand here and hear the clip-clop of hooves, mm -hmm. and we do. Yeah. Um, it's taken a lot of money, it's taken a lot of time and planning, but I'm lucky enough to work for a family that have a very long view. So the return that we're going to get will be small, but what we have done is increase the asset value of this site from effectively uh, a bomb site. It, I mean, if, uh, if you could see the pictures of what it used to look like to what it looks like now, we've increased the asset value and we will generate cash out of it going forward into the long term. And the family have a view that they want to keep these assets. We're not selling them off. We're generating money for the family for the future to upkeep the house. Yeah, and that's probably one of the things that Great Britain isn't the best at doing sometimes, looking to the future. So it's quite refreshing to have, to have something like this. It is. Now, that really is the USP of this place, exactly what you said. It's life's predicament that you might have to work in the city because we can't all live on estates and ride horses all day. Mm. But you are offering something, what I see, absolutely bespoke, really, in terms that you can work in the city, mm. you can come in, have your escapism. Yeah. And just the clubhouse there, for example, you have Wi-Fi and changing rooms. And yeah, I mean, the clubhouse is like a golf club. And the, and what Lord Beersted said in his address today is absolutely right. You can have good facilities for the animals, but actually the people that pay for those animals is the people that we need to look after. What I find quite interesting about the clubhouse is we spend a lot of time and effort planning the clubhouse in the first phase of the development. And actually, not many people actually use it. But I do think that it is a selling point. They use the showers and they use the lockers. But the fact that it's there and the fact that you can have a coffee in a nice environment and look out and see your horse being looked after, I think is really what people are after and really gives us something different. It's not just a rusty nail. It is a serious, you know, it's a, it's a golf club. Um, and I think that does give us a point of difference. Um, and, and that's why we replicated it up on the new indoor school. We've built another one because we think it, it is something that, although people don't use very often, 
the fact that it's available means that people are attracted to it. Yeah, and what's really nice about here is, is you haven't overdone it with the stables. Can you just remind me how many stables there are? So we've 27 stables now. We've got 18, which is this original block that we opened in 2010, and then we've got another nine up on the top. And I think if you want an analogy for what's going on here, we're not trying to be Tesco's. We're trying to be M&S. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're, yeah. we're trying to. We're, we're not stacking it high. We want to keep increasing the livery fees let's be honest about it we've we've invested a lot of money here so we need to see a return on that money but in the long term we will see that return but we're looking to provide a bespoke service to the clients that we've got here and if we do that we can get a name for ourselves doing that we can continue to generate income and rental from 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 this business yeah and lastly just to just to finish on really it must be quite nice for you here today the sun's come out for us october the 10th very nice it must be momentum to see how it is now because you've had this from 2004 that's quite a long time I, it, it's 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 lovely and i think what the nicest thing i was talking to jenny who works with me in the office this morning and and she said to me i just feel proud to be part of the estate and she's worked for us for three years now i mean if 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 somebody is saying that to me who works alongside me all the time that really is what it's all about we have got something the owners are proud of um, this has been a fantastic project from my point of view in terms of developing a, a, a redundant farm site um, and we've got a team of people around us who are great and actually it feels very, very nice to be part of it and, and what, a, what a fantastic place to work to be quite honest with you.